Hey everyone, welcome back to the Alehorn after an extended hiatus uh, due to some personal stuff and uh, some storm disaster situations, but uh, I am back for October here. Uh, not doing any Halloween related stuff, but we are going a little uh, deep into some cool albums called the Concept Albums. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Concept Album, uh, it is like an album that is one, all the songs are and artwork are part of a collective story. So we're just going to talk about our, uh, you know, uh, thoughts about concept albums, maybe a show a few of our favorites off and uh, just have a good, uh, deep, robust discussion about concept albums and what they mean to us. So let's go ahead and just uh, introduce everyone here real quick. Uh, got Aaron Assant from uh, Connecticut uh, representing Northeast. And of course, you know, this guy in the bottom here, Mr. Martin Jackson, Mr. Flamekeeper himself, Mr. Majestic. Uh, getting the uh, photo shoot done today for oh uh, yeah, Hal. dude. So uh, so yeah, welcome back from uh, the photo shoot, Mark. Glad you can make it, and uh, thanks again, Aaron, for uh, coming on uh, this no Saturday problem. night, pre Halloween Saturday night. So uh, well, so, yeah. for one, I do want to point out a Santon battery, mm -hmm. Aaron representing a Santon battery, not just Connecticut metal. Um, hey, hell yeah, uh, fellow. Well, I give him the whole. I give him the whole Northeast. Like, that. well, yeah, you know the whole Northeast. <laughs> Yeah. Um Our and camera. yeah, man, that was a long day. Photo shoots usually are, and when you're walking all over a, a park just to get the good shots, I mean, mm -hmm. and some of the bad ones, I'm sure. Did you uh <laughs> did you scare any kids or families looking all like you did? Yes. Okay, well, that's a good photo shoot then. Congratulations. Yeah, that's yeah. Productive. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did do that. But I mean, we all drove to Indianapolis to do it. And for me, it's two hours one way. Yeah. So I had a nice four hour drive. And then we went to eat at Kuma's Corner. Mm -hmm. And right. it was pretty, pretty cool. And if you, if anybody out there is not familiar with Kuma's Corner is a metal restaurant. They have one in Chicago. They have one in Indy. I think there's another one in another place, but I'm not sure. Uh, it was my first time going. They've got burgers such as the Black Sabbath, the Iron Maiden, uh, it's totally cool stuff. Um, check them out. And they once and every month they run a special burger, and it's just like you know, chef special. And it might be the, the Gojira or uh, Sean from Wise Blood Records had a, a Wise Blood burger, right? Uh, awesome. on one of the monthly specials. We need to so get on the uh, flame keeper special. Yeah, it seems like they're missing an opportunity with the Gojira. It should be, it should be the Gujira with a like a Gouda burger, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, change it. Like get a little involved there, but you know, play on words. I would I, I would be a big fan of that. Yeah. I mean, it could totally be like Godzilla Tail burger, right. like and make it out of like alligator. Yeah. We have a sub shop down here called Silverball Subs, and they have some music related uh subs that um I've seen you. I've seen the Led one. Uh, yeah, they got one called the Lemmy, um, the Painkiller, uh, which is all like spicy Italian stuff. Uh, <laughs> actually, they actually they have the Screaming for Vengeance uh, artwork painted on the wall, which I think is pretty cool. And that um, is always nice. Yeah, they, they, they always, it on my arm. Yeah, they always play like some like Judas Priest and Maiden and shit in there. So yeah, I always like feel at home when I go there and get my uh, twenty dollar combo, which is a twelve inch sub, chips, and a drink, but. You gotta represent, man. That shit ain't cheap anymore. But uh, it's yeah. good though. At least it's not it's not Subway. So, um, so yeah, I true. always feel like I get my money's worth just not in the walk into a Subway, for sure. That's true. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, let's the go concept here. album. Yeah, I'll let you start, Mark. Since you you went ahead. Yeah. What you, no, what's your thought on concept man. albums? Huh? Well, what's your thought on concept albums? Like, what was your first one you remember? Um, do you ever like figure them out the first time you listen to them? Is there any that you so, ever learned? It was a concept album years after you listened to it? Stuff like that. Here we go. We're going to learn to pronounce. Concept album. Uh, a rock album featuring a cycle of songs expressing a particular theme or idea. Right. Is what a concept album is defined as. And ultimately, to me, the ones that I go to are still the, I'd probably say the straight up four from the seventies that, you know, or five from the seventies that everybody goes to. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be like all of the Floyd, all of the major Floyd from the seventies and probably uh thick as a brick. Jeff by Jethro Tull. Yeah. yeah. And 
it was and think as a brick as a concept being two songs but it was written as a regard for the one album that everyone views as a concept album but it pissed ian off because it was not my visual aid yep is aqualung yeah and totally you would think is a concept album but not and but no, like the four Floyd albums, like I said, the ones that everybody would probably go to, like Wish You Were Here, Dark Side, Animals, and The Wall. Mm -hmm. You know, because ultimately The Wall is, I still to this day, I it gets to be about September and I still give it a spin. Even, you know, 30 years removed from hearing it the first time. Yeah, it's classic, man. Like It can yeah. it'll, it'll withstand the test of time for sure. Yeah. But I mean, I I've probably written inadvertent concept albums also, mm -hmm. like Aqualung. When I was in a band called Full Tilt, we had a it was really like a it it worked out to where it, it told a story of like a dude who's kind of getting his getting his way in the world, meets this chick has a fucking a real down period, meets net, uh, chick number two, and then has a really fucking far down period again. Yeah, It's like, I'm drunk, I'm sober, I'm drunk, I'm sober, I'm dead. You know, it's like the fucking, the, the like Dennis life. Leary. <laughs> yeah. The circle of life, yeah. I'm drunk, I'm sober, I'm drunk, I'm sober, I'm dead. I uh, I, would, I think that concept that was more like fiction. That sounds like it's just like real life. A uh, uh, year in the life of Mark Jackson, really. It, it might think. have been actually. <laughs> you know, it might have been. <laughs> uh, but that's that's my take on it. And like, I love a good concept album to put back. And the thing about it is, is like I'm kind of dumb on on the deal because I I don't know if it's a concept album going into a lot of it right like lateralis is apparently a concept album but you have to listen to it in a particular order called the holy gift oh, yeah i don't i don't go in that shit. i'm not <laughs> i'm not a tool fan Aaron so. just goes oh yeah. jesus i'm not a tool fan so i don't even i don't even care about them but but you see what i'm saying though yeah i mean is it or is it just like at fans after the fact saying that it's concept <laughs> Yeah, I think Tool fans, and if you are one watching, I apologize, but I think they try to get a little too heady over that band. It's just like, maybe they just write long songs that kind of are boring, and you're just trying to like justify your fandom, because I've listened to a lot of the stuff that's not on the radio, and dude, I'm out after like three minutes, man. It's just like, I, I, I can't do this. Like, this doesn't yeah. hook me. It's like, it's seems a little pretentious as as their later stuff like i remember when they came out and they had like the ep with like the big like naked fat lady and stuff i had that cd i was like Man, this is like really cool because the ep was like really short and then like after like the third album they just started like writing these like really long obtuse songs i'm just like yeah I'm good. Indulgent. yeah yeah <laughs> and then the people are just like i am very sophisticated because i am a tool fan it's like oh. right yeah i mean i think i've kind of outgrown tool uh, to mm -hmm. the degree of where it's like ever since like 10,000 days, I was just kind of like meh after I think that. I think that's the last one I bought. Um, but I have the, the CD, it has like, the CD has like the CD has like the uh, like the the like binoculars or some kind of lenses on stereoscopic, the stereoscopic, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the last one I bought. I didn't understand what that was for and I didn't care, and that was it, yeah. It's because all of their artwork had gimmick, mm -hmm. it was a thing of the 90s. Like the lint, some of them had like lenticular, uh, yeah. uh, like Enema had the lenticular, uh, album cover, right? Um, uh, like Psycho Circus did, and we all know how well that went. <laughs> that speaking of concept albums, yeah. <laughs> I would say The Elder is more of a concept album than Psycho Circus. Okay, was. abort meeting. No, Psycho Circus is a concept album because Con they got figure, they got McFarland yeah. figures based yeah, off sure, of okay. it. Yeah, sure, that's true. They got a comic based off of it, right. and you're in the psy, you're in the Psycho Circus. Oh, right? I'm gonna step out for just a second. My audio is still on. Go ahead, keep talking. No. But yeah. You know, you've got the psycho circus thing going, and 
Yeah, that's a concept album. I would probably say the first concept album that I remember hearing, and this is probably one of my parents. I'm sure it was. I remember looking through the you know record rack and seeing this. It was probably um, Meatloaf's "Bad Out of Hell." I mean, that is, I would say, a concept album. It has like a full story about you know the mm. girl and the guy and stuff like that. <laughs> um i know it's not a very popular record with some people i personally enjoy the record i think it's a great record um but that's probably one of the first ones i remember and then another one that i rem- it's a half of a, a concept a half the first half of the album but rush is 21 12 you know? oh sure the first half of that is just so fucking excellent broken up into like the different pieces almost like a, a classical piece of music so that that was another one and that i i one of the first ones that come to mind or earliest ones that I personally remember hearing and listening to or, or probably Meatloaf and then the Rush album. So. Hey, speaking of, going back real quick here. Ah, Sorry, there you go. Is. <laughs> this is, um, is that unopened? No, it is open. Uh, this is one of four. I got the uh, enhanced CD, uh, the Paul Stanley uh, cover CD. Uh, then of course the four are you know the four uh, original members and then here is the uh video cassette with the 3d video oh, i do not have oh, the glasses nice. i don't have the glasses so, um, so, wow yeah. but uh yeah i, I got, I got two but, thirds of this i don't have that but i still have my original copy from 96 mm-hmm. and it is a radio station promo copy oh wow mm, that's cool um, as a matter of fact on this one um how old this is uh, from 98. This has a connect to kiss online, the new internet service provider, the ultimate connection to the kiss world and beyond. Dude, that shit's so fucking obsolete nowadays. I'd like to go on. I'd like to connect the CD and just see what it does. You know, what's the website? Uh, it just says uh, kiss online. It doesn't give a website or anything. Just kiss I online. guarantee there's a link to sell you something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, kissonline.com welcome oh, yeah. to the official kiss website is it they still uh psycho circus uh put pushing the album i mean sign up on the mailing list no thank you <laughs> gosh celebrating 50 year rock legacy yeah soon to be coming out of retirement to a town near you i'm sure <clears throat> yeah, they're going to start playing the fucking Z towns now. Right. All right. So, uh, Aaron, yeah, 2112. Yeah. That's a fucking good one. I think so. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I'm not a huge Rush fan, but that album does stand out to me. Um, really? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I appreciate them, but like a I said, a drummer who's not a Rush fan. Dude, I mean, not everything's for everybody, man. Like, that's um, true. Yeah, I mean, I just like, I don't know, man. Like, some of it's good. I like a lot of the riffs, but again, some of it's that self indulgent stuff. You know, it's like, uh, like, I like, I'm a fan of long songs that they hold me, but like, if they, if they just get a little obtuse, um, like, even some of the later maiden stuff, I just can't, I can't hang with some of it, you know, it just kind of loses me. But, um, <clears throat> you know, but yeah. I am going to, I'm going to go ahead and do this now because we're going to go ahead and get it, get it out of the way. Okay. Uh, because this is probably an overlap concept album. Yeah, let me, let me go ahead and get mine out just in case you got it here. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, I mean, I don't need your whole fucking giant goddamn box mm. copy. Um, <laughs> which obviously is three, two, one. The Outsider. Yeah. From Night Demon. Uh, Definitely a good, a great concept album. Um, mm. And actually, uh, I'm just going to leave you in the background because I'm just going to go get it because I know you've got a copy of it too, Jason. Okay. <clears throat> we'll wait for Mark to get back. But uh, so, uh, Aaron, you were saying uh, when I mentioned this uh, topic that you you have a love hate relationship with concept albums. So, what is your what's your negative uh, towards it? Just out of curiosity. Um, that sometimes they tend to be uh, extremely bloated. Oh, uh, 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 no, Shadamas, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes they can get a little meandering. If the band isn't like really, you know, nice. in, uh, honed in on that concept and know where to cut the fat more. on stuff, right? Then it, they can become pretty bloated, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. I see what you're saying because it almost has like a point to where even the wall, I think, is bloated to a degree. 
There are songs I've heard a lot that are of on the wall. Say that that's pretty much just like a Roger Waters solo project almost, you know? Sure, it is. I think the only, there's only four songs that I think anybody in the band else had something to do with writing on. Did he just re- record the wall or was that Dark Side? I know he recorded like one of them, one of the classic albums. Dude, I think that's actually just myth. Because like there's something like where somebody like there's the myth with Ronnie Dio who fucking uh who went in and remixed the album before and then shipped the his mix off. And apparently that's why he was fired from Black Sabbath from the live right. from remixing the live album. It says he's re-recording Dark Side of the Moon, but that was like 2023, February 2023. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I, yeah, I that, remember that. It was I, I know think, he was going to do it for a new live for like a new tour, right? No, I remember it pissed a lot of people off because it was it was like a real different interpretation than the original, and it it kind of sucked because Rogers can't really sing that great anymore, you know. Sure, but yeah, I can see where you say that uh, concept albums can be uh, bloated. Definitely, uh, like I said, I think the wall has some bloating to it. There's parts in there that I don't think necessarily like. I get why they're there, but to, I mean, because I, you know, I've obsessed over reading about it and finding out as much as I can about why, why Roger wrote it, but, uh, doing things like, uh, Vera and bring the boys back home and stop, you know, Hmm. that's not necessarily songs that you really need in the concept of the album. Right. Do you guys ever have any problems listening to like one song off a concept album, like the middle, like say like track five by itself? Is there, or do you have to like, if you want to listen to it, do you have to listen like the whole thing like I do? Depends on the album. Yeah. Because I mean, then you got to get into like what's a concept album? Does it have to be all the songs are part of one story, one thematic story, or is it an album that maybe has all the songs are in the same theme, you know? For instance, Um, I have a band that, you know, I've been posting a lot about lately, uh, Bannock, you know, I love Bannock. Could that be considered a concept? I mean, because it's all about killing Halloween, you know, scary horror stuff. So, you know, it's a lot of it is like, what is a concept album Mm. even, you know? Yeah, gotcha. So the one that comes to mind for me is like a concept album that's not really like all the songs are tied together by like story, but more like theme is uh, Seven Sun. Sure. And as a matter of fact, I've I've read uh, recently that the uh, the song Benjamin Brieg off of uh, a matter of life and death is actually uh, in the family of these of this album. Uh, okay. It's like a way because he was Benjamin Brieg in Maiden mythology that they based on around the Seven Sun stuff was uh, the Seventh Sun actually. So that's why he they they had like a big whole like fake bio and backstory and stuff uh, wrote up for him. And it's easily the best the best song on that album uh, if you ask me. Um, I'm not a huge Matter of Life and Death fan, but I do like that song, and I think there's one million, like one million songs so or something same, like that. So in so. that same uh, deal, <clears throat> you could totally take Benjamin Brieg and play it with Seventh Son, and it would and it would work into that. It's supposed to be related into the uh, mythology that they uh, wrote about for Seventh Son. Yeah, while I was reading, they do seem like <laughs> they do that with with album as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you really think about it, because Eddie is the concept and whatever, yeah. whatever mischief Eddie is getting into, like, say, for example, on Power Slave, mm-hmm. you had the song Power Slave, which is completely Egyptian yeah. and the matches the artwork to the concept. Sure. Yeah. And then, you know, like, but you get other songs that have like Egyptian, uh, tonal feels like you know like in two minutes to midnight and and in lost for words Mm -hmm. and stuff like that so Mm -hmm. it makes it it does give it a a a feel of a concept as well because it does fit a theme yeah 
Yeah. Bane's always been pretty good about like kind of tying stuff in there and their tours and stuff are like based around like themes too. So like whatever the theme yeah. is, like all the songs that are kind of related to it, they'll throw in there too, which I think is pretty cool. Sure. Yeah, like they always have like their made in Japan. Yeah. They always have their staples and shit. Like there's always like the troopers going to be in there and, you know, either run for the hills or, um, um, number of the beast. But, um, you know, a lot, they, they're pretty good about change up stuff. I mean, they've even saw them dropping, they dropped hallowed. Off quite a few tours, which they probably thought they'd never do. So, um, yeah, there's, yeah, uh, I, I've seen them where they didn't play Hallowed Be Thy Name. Yeah, I have to. When they actually got sued about it, they dropped it. But I wish they would drop Fear of the Dark and just put something else in because it's kind of like played out at this point. Like it's almost like I a like, bathroom break. I still song. like Fear of the Dark. I do too, but you know, they're, they're getting old. Let's, let's, let's get some new shit in there, you know? Um, so yeah. Yes. Um, like Empire of the Clouds. That's yeah. a concept album on an album. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> fucking, it's a, it's a fucking nineteen minute song on a fucking ninety minute album. Yeah, that's on Book of Souls, right? Yes. Yeah. And see, bloated. that's the other thing that I, that's see again, Book of Souls. Mm -hmm. Is it a concept album because it breaks into a theme? Like, well, it is. But then they have like that Tears of a Clown, which is about Robin Williams killing himself. So what? I don't know where that fits into like you know uh, being a witch doctor, but you know, cool. I guess. <laughs> I mean, because Robin Williams played Patch Adams, of course. Yeah, I mean, also who was Popeye. basically a modern day <laughs> witch doctor? Okay, I got he, you. he cured people with ha by happiness. Yeah, I mean, when yeah. I, I just heard of that. When I first heard of that song, I was like, "What? Maybe it's covering Smokey Robinson now? Like, what's going on?" <laughs> <laughs> they should. That'd be interesting. <laughs> that would be interesting. It is Deep Purple. I forgot which song. But it wasn't bad. Maybe uh, storm trucking, maybe. I think space trucking, space trucking, space yeah, sorry. trucking. Storm I have storm on my mind, with... obviously, because every time I go outside, it's like, oh yeah, it stormed a month ago. And... It's both Stormbringer and space. It's trucking. like yeah, we have it hasn't rained since, so we're like now in like drought conditions after flooding conditions. It's fucking bizarre, but um, yeah. So what else you got, uh, guys? You want to share uh, concept albums, uh, some special ones or ones that? Well, here's one about. I like. Um, okay. It's from the band um, A Sound of Thunder, and this is they do. A, they're like big with comics, and this mm -hmm. is from I think um, I'm not sure the comic. It's from a Valiant comics. Um, it's from Tales from the Dead Side. Nice. Holy hell, and that's awesome. It, yeah, it's got a really cool. Um, I have a poster. It's from the Shadow Man comics. And hold on one second. I'll show you the poster over here, too. And come right over here. Big peak of Aaron's room here. Yeah, the Ascent <laughs> Bar and Grill. You see that poster right yeah. there? All right next to the Iron Flame one? Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's kind of cool, too. So, like I said, they, it's like a whole uh, that um comic there, The Shadow Man. Right. So I always like when a band, like, you know, does something interesting like that. And uh, they're they're always you know writing great songs. So and I, they also have a few other albums that are concept albums. Um, their last one, the Rise of the Crimson Cult, um, or Crimson Cult, was um you can kind of guess what that was kind of loosely based on and stuff like that. So you know that that's another band that was re releasing some great concept albums. So cool, yeah. By you, Mark, you next. I mean. <laughs> You got any? You don't have to have visual aids for it. You can talk about anything. I I don't know. I still go back even to like things like Omagama oh and and it, I mean they're like the masters of the concept album mm -hmm. to me. Floyd is, and I mean I don't know. It it's. I wish I could. I mean, I'm in the process of writing one, actually. Right. So it is a lot to take in. It is a lot to consider. And, you know, you really have to, you really have to make sure you have like tie in musically as well as tie in vocally as mm -hmm. well as storyline, mm -hmm. you know, whether it be a passage or whatever. That's like, when you get to something like another brick in the wall part one and and this was wild because i just recently was at uh it was at big goddamn metal show 
and it was on the in the loudspeaker after the after the show was over for night one, and we were bullshitting around, and it it was wild because um, they played Brick One, Brick uh, Happiest Days of Our Lives, Brick Two, and then Brick Three. And it was like, holy shit, what the, the hell, man? Trifecta, and, and it yeah. and it was just like so wild to hear all all four of those songs together. And right. it was just like, you know, like a five minute song or whatever. And it, it was totally cool because I hadn't heard I hadn't really listened to it this year. And it kind of reinvigorated some like guitar playing for me. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um and what's y'all's thoughts on the uh, King Diamond uh, concept albums for Abigail and the uh, and the sequel? I love them. Yeah, yeah. I, I am up. King Diamond fan, so I mean them. It doesn't get much better than. Well, it's awesome because like it's supposed to take place on like isn't like the seventh of July in nineteen in seventeen seventy seven or something like that. It's like so it's got like that seventh. Sun vibe with the with the sevens and show that, which was cool about Seventh Sun is it was a seventh album of Maiden, so like fit really good. That I always thought that was kind of cool. Uh, Isn't like the legend like the Seventh Son of a Seventh Son is um, born with the power of clairvoyance or something, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what the Maiden yeah. one. Is. Yeah, 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 that's what I thought. Yeah, but the King Diamond one was like a, it was like a count and his wife. Um, yeah, and like she cheated on him. And then something like that. I don't know. I had to go back and listen to it. It's been a long time since I listened to Abigail for sure. Um, yeah, I probably yeah. don't even remember. I don't really remember any of it, to be honest with you. But the band I just mm-hmm. interviewed on um, the last interview came out, Lady Luna and the Devil. They kind of mm-hmm. they their last album was a concept album. In fact, almost all their albums, I think, are concept albums. And they're based on like spooky. I think their last one is on vampires, and I believe they're gonna continue that with their next two albums. So I'm really looking forward to that, you know, tales of vampires and scary stuff. I'm a big nerd for shit like that. So, so apparently, as I'm reading through this, um, th- all of the King Diamond concept albums, yeah, are shared within the same universe, right? So that's even better. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I and I love musical theater like that mm-hmm. because. I'd like to think that anything that I've done musically is the same way that it's all part of the same shared universe at yeah. some, at some point it's some, it's some conflated thing. And, and granted, I mean, it was probably Vince McMahon who, you know, who coined that like with like the WWE universe, he'd been calling it that for so long, what the world is watching, you know, shit. Right. Um, and like, yeah, I think that's a, I think everybody, I think a good concept album is a good, uh, a good picture into what real life is, mm-hmm. whether or not it's, you know, whether or not it's in earth 2024 or earth 1776. Or seventeen seventy seven or exactly whatever. Exactly right, yeah. Exactly right. But um, yeah, I need to go back and and get those King Diamond albums. I don't have any King Diamond, just Merciful Fate. Um, there's a lot of holes in my King Diamond uh, knowledge and fandom, actually. That I guess um, you know, is never too late to catch up. But yeah, I'm I'm like way fucking behind on his solo stuff for sure. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll admit that flaw. If you need to revoke my metal card, please uh, send me a self-addressed stamped envelope and I'll send it to you. Um, sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, real quick, Mark, before we move on, I, I remember you said you you were writing a concept album. Do you have a concept of a plan for this album? That- <laughs> I have concepts of a plan. Yes. <laughs> okay. I was just wondering. That's, I always thought that was pretty- a concept. <laughs> so I don't know if Aaron saw this, but I will bring it out for here. Speaking right. of the concept album. Yes. The uh, red apple from uh, right Snow now. White. Nice. Yeah, that's all I can tell you about. Nah. We'll revisit. We'll do this topic again after you release it. It's like more concept albums. Yes. Uh, I'll just go ahead and throw my next one up here. This is like the newest concept album I have uh, and know of. 
New Grand Vegas. Yeah. 35 minutes about Beowulf and Grendel. Uh, yeah, this is like one of those, like, there's a good, I'm not giving this, this isn't S tier, but there is one song I really don't like because it's very similar to another one of theirs off of a uh, sword songs I thought was kind of weird. But um, very good uh, regardless. Um, you know, almost every song fucking is awesome. So uh, yeah, it's a it fucking, is a great a album. Sun Raven just came out like last week. I'm your Sun Raven. Yep. And then here's another <laughs> one. Too. Uh, another one too. A uh, pretty pretty recent one here. Uh, Night Voices of the Cronian Moon. Yeah. About the Time Raiders. Uh, this is the Time Raider, and uh, he has a trident. Um. Uh, all of the song the trident at the end which is a uh, probably my favorite song on this album i i practice my drums onto that one a lot um it's got it's got a good um quarter note shuffle and shit it's really fucking cool almost like you can almost fucking fucking dance to like the uh, ghoulish lemmy uh sounding vocals and power black power metal vocals it's, it's pretty awesome i love that combination and then uh i'm just gonna go through i'll just go through mine real quick and i'll let aaron go through his so this is a two out of three of a concept trilogy from Lord Dying. We've got Mysterian Mysterium Trendum, I think that's how you say. It. And then uh, this one is uh what is it? Clandestine Transcendence. So these are about a guy called the Dreamer. Uh, the first one is about him uh, living and wanting to die. The second one is him actually dying and traversing the afterlife. So I'm assuming the third one's gonna be him coming back to life of some kind. Um so if you're a fan of like Maiden and Yes and like uh early Metallica, like Ride of Lightning era, Master Puppets era, and probably a little bit of um, I don't know, like ELO in there, like these two might be uh and some and of course like some fucking brutalized death metal too. Uh these might be up your alley if you haven't listened to them uh before. They're both really good. Are you familiar with that band, Aaron? Lord uh, I've heard of them. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with their music, though. Oh yeah, man, you should check it out. This is these two. Uh, Poison Altars is pretty good, but these are way superior. Uh, first concept album I, I remember um, knowing was a concept album actually was uh, "Crack the Sky" from Mastodon about uh, Braun Daler's uh, sister dying. And then they have another concept album too, which is "Emperor of the Sand," which is about being diagnosed with cancer and going through the stages of. Uh, dying of cancer so they're always like a fucking really upbeat band with their uh, subject matter <laughs> and then uh we got uh, the high on fire one the firm is mysterious uh which is a loosely based concept album about jesus's twin brother dying at birth and then becoming a time traveler and coming back to tell him about stuff pretty fucking cool brutal album that's what it's pretty it's my favorite time on fire album and that's, that's actually i mean a really i know good idea yeah, they have a lot of cool Time ones. traveling Jesus' dead brother. Hell yeah, man. It's fucking, yeah, that's that brutal. Fucking album's intense, dude. And then uh, the well, album you that. You're going to come back with me. <laughs> and then the album that like, in, uh, influenced the album behind Aaron there, Skullthor Edenblade, which I helped write, is uh, this one right here, uh, Yom's Viking. Uh, so this one um, is a full story. Uh, Doro Pesh guest stars on it. Um, it's about a dude who. You know, goes out to uh, his uh, goes out to sea and does a bunch of cool shit and comes back and you know settles down. But the thing I like about this album is, and this is the really the reason I brought it down, is uh, it's got a pop up book, man, pop up Viking ship in it. Oh, yeah, dude. how often do you get that? You know, so yeah, it takes me back to the pop up books of my childhood. I, I couldn't fucking, fucking love resist that. it, dude. I couldn't resist it. So uh, my stepson's actually put a claim on this when I'm dead. He's taking it from me. Uh, so yeah, I told him go ahead. I won't mind a bit. And then uh, yeah, and then of course you know uh, the one I'm proud of is this one, which I actually wrote lyrics for for the story. And then I had so many fucking lyrics that I just turned into a book. So this was like music. This is like lyrics based on this music already. Uh, <laughs> it said the other way around. Uh, yeah. So uh, it's uh, very easy to read. I didn't even put page numbers on it because it's like mostly like a like a manuscript kind of more of a thing, but um, like I said, it's like a fifth grade reading level. It's got some uh, you know perverted uh, shit in it every once in a while, uh, you, and also you should do an audio book version. I should, but the thing I'm, I'm most proud about it is uh, I actually tie in uh, the EP before that album into the story. So um, the EP. Uh, uh shit, I don't even know what it's called anymore. Uh the black and white one. Hold on, what is it called? 
<laughs> anyway, I forgot my own history because it's fucking after 10 and or almost 10, I go brain dead. But uh, yeah, the EP, the black and white EP before is tied into the story, which I was pretty proud of. Um, if you're interested, if you're wondering, it's in the uh, it's in the bar chapter when they're talking, they're, they're catching up. Uh, so, and then I also make fun of it at the same time, which I thought was pretty fucking awesome. So, <laughs> if you're interested in the lore of Cunt Hammer, the eight and tusked mammoth, uh, read up, read up about it. It's in there. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! Definitely. <laughs> Hell yeah. We're gonna do that. We're gonna do an audiobook version. Yeah. What I really want to do is a dude like sitting next to a fireplace smoking a pipe and like a nice sweater vest and reading like the one of the excerpts of the book that I'm, I really like um in there. So yeah, I'm That's pretty good idea. Yeah, I'm a, I got I got a guy lined up to do it. I just need to fucking do it. It's not cold enough yet, but I, I I'm gonna get him to do it soon, I think. Get a nice cardigan. Yes, exactly. I wanted to look the so weather fucking, patches. Yeah, like so fucking dorky Thanks and just sit there reading it. Yeah, yeah. Hello. So that's what I want. Hello, everybody. I'm here to read a passage from the upcoming re-release of Skullthorpe Even Blade. And then he just starts reading off about like giant vaginas and eight yeah. <laughs> <So, yeah. laughs> Absolutely. You know, 16-year-old boy shit. Yeah. Couldn't couldn't resist not putting it in there. So. Well, I mean, yeah, it's like it, it's everything about Conan that we love. Yeah. Well, dude, exactly. I mean, yeah. After I listened to the after the uh, Young Viking album, I told Mike, I was like, dude, we should do something like this. And like, he's like, what should we do it about? I was like, I don't know. Someone with like a cool name, like Skull Skeletor and like Thor. And then he's like, Skull Thor. I was like, that's it. And he's like, even Blaze. Like, that's fucking it, dude. So then it was like off to the races from there. We had we already had like three songs written. Yeah, we Dude, I, so yeah, we were just like done. It was a, that was it, man. We were like off to the races on that shit. I was on Bandcamp. Let's just like right. I think right after the album came out, and mm-hmm. um, I never heard of you guys before. I'm like, oh, Temptations Wings. They, they probably sound like Down or something like that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We get that a lot actually. So then yeah. I, I click as soon as I see the name Skullthor Even Blade, I'm like, oh, that piqued my interest. That sounds mm-hmm. fucking cool, man. And when I heard it, it was nothing like Down, but I was so pleasantly surprised. I instantly clicked and bought it and. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was fun, man. That was a fun period, man. We had a lot of fun with that stuff. But um, yeah, it's probably the... I like the, the new one, it, though. I do, too. Yeah, I mean, Marauders is... It's not really a concept album, but like I love the name Marauders of the Killing Moon so much that I, could, I just fucking... I told the rest of the guys this is what the fucking album's called. Because I was like, this album... This name is too fucking cool. We're not fucking wasting it. It's the album title. No, so, I'm talking about the one that we're not talking about yet. Oh, I mean the, the new one that we're writing. Yeah, yeah. I've let Aaron enlist uh, an idea, and I've let you listen to an idea, um, and we have That's other ideas. Killer. But yeah, um, I'm pretty excited about that one too. Uh, things are moving along at a nice pace with the writing. Uh, everyone, stay tuned for the um, uh, Exalted Cyclops Must Die. Uh, it's probably gonna be my favorite one on there. It's a good one. So nice. Ooh, I like that name. Yeah, it's about uh. Alphas. So I'm I'm I have this thing about the clan like they make me mad because like they stole like basically like D and D stuff, um and like had their ranks on it. So like the the names of their like ranks like fit really well into fucking fantasy. So it's like a song disguised as like storming a castle, but it's a fucking clan hideout that we're storming. Uh, so yeah, exalted cyclops is like high up on the like the rank the rank list. So Exalted Cyclops Must Die was like a really cool fucking name that I thought was really just like really metal. Okay, and so I I, I, so that so we wrote it and then that we the music's coming along pretty good for it. Um so yeah, um I don't know. We'll release it one of these days. Hopefully next year we'll have quite a few done. But yeah. Same. So I yeah, get what you're good. saying. For instance, like the clan uses a name like the Grand Wizard. Exactly. Which on its own sounds like it should be a pretty cool you know, title, but that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, they they stole all the, the clan cool shit. Like, it, it's not that cool anymore. Yeah, they stole all the cool shit, like the names, and then like now it's like associated with like racism. But I'm like, okay, like the Nazis, with the swastika. Yeah, your names are still like fucking like pretty cool, like Dungeons and Dragons kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna use those names, but the song is totally about killing clan members, uh, killing yeah. Nazis, exactly, or whoever you know. Yeah, whoever. I think I saw this documentary called Meet the Hitlers, and it was all about people whose last name <laughs> just happened to be Hitler. Yeah. And like yeah. almost all of them change it, you know, because it's. Yeah, of course. You I don't want to be Steve you? Hitler, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Steve Hitler, the janitor in that TV station. 
You know, <laughs> he just he just minds his own business cleaning, and gets fucking egged and shit. It's just just the same name. You know? I'm not related. Yeah, yeah, that fucking sucks, man. Like, do you remember when Michael Jordan brought back like the Hitler mustache? That one like commercial he was on the airplane. <laughs> Like, it's like, dude, what the fuck are you thinking, man? Like that that mustache, should, that style went extinct when he died. Well, that's how popular he Bring was. Like, Michael Jordan was so popular he could rock a Hitler mustache. And exactly, people were like, yeah, that's yeah. not a good idea. Yeah, it's like, you do that. We're losing our job, you know. Yeah, did you forget to shave something? Nope, you're fucking out of here. As a matter of fact, we're gonna kill you now. Yeah, you know? like get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah. It takes well, some. Like, it, my- it takes some bravado to do that for sure. But yeah, he had it, I guess. <laughs> In my job, like, you know, I do home health work and sometimes I got to shave guys. And that's the one part of them. Like, man, you got to let me finish this shave, dude. I'm not leaving with a Hitler mustache. <laughs> Stay still or I'll fucking kill you where you sleep. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Goldberg, be still. I don't want to leave you with that mustache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get you. I get you. Oh, back. Aaron, no. Well, that <laughs> happened one time. I had a, literally a Jewish guy and I'm trying to shave and I'm like, look, dude, I can't leave you with like, you know, then, like you gotta let Where? me shave here, you know. Yeah. Oh, I was like, why did his name have to be Mister Goldberg? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's good stuff, man. Yeah, it's awesome. That's like something yeah. you'd see on a uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm or something. Oh no shit! Yeah, yeah. I need to finish that up. I want like season like four or five. I know it's ended, so I need to finish that up. All right. Well, I'm gonna show you a few more of the concept albums I got. Yeah, let's get back on fucking track here. Jesus Christ, right. we went way off. So this one was actually um one of my top five of last year. This is uh Morrison Graves and their album Division Rising. Mm-hmm. And this is actually um I think on their uh, their Bandcamp page it says it's a concept album about if I can remember homelessness, gentrification, and socioeconomic gaps. <clears throat> so um it's a pretty you know political concept album, but um. It's some really catchy, um, I'd say, uh, gothic rock mixed with a little uh, psychedelia. So that's interesting. Usually, yeah. usually you don't quote you know, like uh, and, like thinking of those two subject uh, genres as like uh, political. Um, yeah, you know, like, you know, it's like yeah, psychedelia, especially you know, it's like kind of like just like smoking weed or tripping or something. So so yeah, that's cool. And another one I got is um, one of my favorite bands is you know everyone. You guys probably know is uh, Clouds Taste Satan. And yeah. This is their latest one, seventy nine AE. And I guess this is actually supposed to be like a soundtrack to a movie that I don't think is even out yet, or something like that. But apparently, I guess that's what I was reading about it. So maybe I'm wrong, but I think that's what it said. So, so they you score know. it and then it got delayed or something. Yeah, and then it just kind of came out as an album. So oh, nice. Okay, that's cool. You know, that's something that I've always wanted to do as a band where I would do, we would do videos based on every song and make a a short film. That's the soundtrack is the album. That's cool. Yeah, that's a cool idea. Well, there's a lot of rock guys. Look at Trent Reznor, how much, um you know, he's done with scoring movies and even did a Disney film, I think. Um what was that? Encanto, I believe, a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, Danny Elfman, who is in Oingo Boingo, he's done everything from the Simpsons to Tim Burton stuff. So yeah. There's a lot of rock guys that do get into scoring stuff. Yeah. No, uh, sure. No, I'm talking about as a band. Being, okay, as a band. Being yeah, shooting a video for each song. And making and, it like a whole movie. And making it like an actual movie like a short film, say if the album's 40 minutes, making the, the videos, you know, make it all string together. Yeah. Where they all string together like that. Yeah. You know, the sword, that would be a cool idea. The sword kind of did that on a warp riders. Actually. Um, They didn't do every song, but they did three videos that were all together uh, on the album that made like a mini movie. It was like a, like a 15 minute movie. That's cool. So they were kind of like on that track. They were kind of like on that path, but I guess their label didn't have enough money for them to do everyone because those videos are, I, I still think they look pretty cool, but they're pretty sophisticated for their time, I think, with like special effects and stuff. So yeah, I think it was a uh, Trey Bruja's, um I forgot what the two were, but yeah, there was like uh, three singles, three videos that were all like you can play them in order. It's like a, it's like a movie. Nice. Yeah, like a short film. 
You got any other ones, Aaron? Anyone? Any special mentions or anything? Um, another one um I'd like to mention is probably um Doctor Colossus. Um, they're kind of more of a concept band, I guess. They're a doom metal band. They call themselves a Springfieldian doom metal band from Australia. Okay, and they do everything's based on The Simpsons. All their songs are based on Simpsons references. Yeah. Um, in fact, their last album was called. I'm a stupid moron uh, with an ugly face and a big butt and my butt smells and I like to kiss my own butt, which if you're a Simpsons fan, you know where that's from. So um, so th- that's another band that I really love. And they're and not only are the Simpson reference great and deep, but the band is fucking kick ass, man. Even if yeah. they weren't about the Simpsons, I'd be a fan of this band. So, right. Were you definitely want to check out. Were you a fan of uh, Oakley Doakley, the uh, Ned Flanders uh, hardcore band? They're okay. I'm not as yeah. big a fan uh, as I am. I'm more of a Dr. Colossus guy. Okay. Or Max Sabbath. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Have you ever heard of a band called Bantha Rider? No, I don't think I so. Have. Yeah. So they're a uh, Star Wars themed band, but it's only Tatooine. Oh, my. Okay. God. And they're fucking, they're pretty fucking heavy, dude. But uh, they're from uh, Sweden, Switzerland, somewhere over there, somewhere in the Netherlands uh, area. Um, but yeah, called Bantha Rider. They're pretty. They're pretty awesome. They're actually one of my uh, top five albums. And like, uh, before I got with Mark, actually. So there was a. Uh, I think they're called Most Icely Spaceport. That's good. And yeah. uh, I think they're they're kind of sound like um, a mix of like Deep Purple and uh, you know like uh, the band that Cantina band from Star Wars. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a mix of that. So that's kind of cool too. Nice concept. Speaking of deep, speaking of deep purple, did anybody listen to their new album that came out earlier this year that I totally forgot about till you just mentioned it? No, nah, I haven't really. I find uh, Gillen's vocals to be a little rough now. You know, okay, I didn't listen to it either. I you just reminded me. I, I forgot they came out with it, and uh, yeah, I should listen to that one day just to see. I'm still focusing on younger bands. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, like I said, you gotta support the younger bands so they can like you know get old, and so I can get old and they still be young enough to play. Um. But um, but yeah, hopefully uh, you know, hopefully the concept album doesn't die off, uh, and younger bands embrace it. You know, they, yeah, when they get like to the point in their career, when they get to the point in their career, they could do it. You know, yeah, they gotta get to the point in their career where they could do it. And so yeah, just keep on, keep on trucking out their younger bands and give us some con- concept. Well, what albums. was the, what was maybe the last really big concept album? Uh, I would probably say um, American you know, Idiot. Yeah, I mean, you might be right there, Mark. I mean, that was probably the last platinum one, maybe. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. Practice, Practice Guy just got a re-release, um, like expanded, like expanded re-release, like live tracks. Yeah, that did. Yeah, um, I mean, that's a big, but I'm talking like big for like stadium size. Yeah, or just like every reg, every everyday people knowing who they are. Like, yeah. They're big for us, but if you actually get I mean, normal on the screen, anything, they don't know any, that. any of the Taylor Swift albums are considered concept at this point because it's concept based on money, <laughs> how much money it can make. Well, when you release a new that is the answer, when, when a you new variant a, every week, yeah, exactly. I'm about to say when you release a new variant every week, yeah, you just you artificially stay on top. You know, it's kind of like it's kind of weird. Um, but I guess album sold is a fucking album sold. So, you know, um, I really think, I really think, uh, other band, like younger, um, smaller bands like Bandcamp, you can really learn something from that, though. Instead of just like releasing the whole shebang at once, like release your black album and then like a, m- a month or two later, release your, your, uh, variant album or vice versa. Um, so, you know, that way at least you like have like some two months of money coming in. I'm before, such a nerd before it just musically. dries up and yeah, you're done. So. I'm such a nerd musically. Uh, when I heard you say that, I immediately thought, release your black album and then release your variant. Like, as in, like, okay, release the black album by the Metallica. Popular. Yeah. The, b- <laughs> release your popular shit and then go back and release shit like Kill 'em All. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, once if you, you got them hooked on order, this. You know? Yeah. Give them the cocaine, you know. Give yeah, them, right. Once you got you them, write them in that order, the good go shit. Give them it's the not shit. Not a bad idea. <laughs> I mean, what you should really do is wait, wait to release your black album ten years, uh, thirty years. Put a box set out, and then release your first album. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like you're really fucking technical with it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and do you think well, the, then, 
I don't have any black. Was, um, our, uh, the concept. last like uh, last couple of six feet under albums, I think, have had a concept to them. I think well, the, the six feet under is, concepts how, are like the uh, graveyard. Well, how shitty of an album can I make before people stop yeah. listening? You know. Yeah, the great graveyard classics are a concept. How how can we ruin these fucking albums? Right. Um, I remember when they first came out, I thought, like, all right, he did one. I'm like, okay, it's kind of funny. I get it, you know. It was Back in Black. And then when he did another one, I'm like, what? Yeah, I don't, wasn't the first one Back in Black that they did? No, I think the first one they had a bunch of, wait, it was either that or, yeah, I forgot. It was either the first or second one. He just covered Back in Black from the entirety, and I'm like, what? Nobody wants anyone to cover that, let alone Chris Barnes, you know? Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find it. Here we go. Graveyard Classics. Uh, let's see. <laughs> ah, fuck. I didn't want it to play. Hold on. I'm trying to zoom in on the uh, on the picture here, but I can't. I can't get it to be clear. I remember even on um, I think it was on Maximum Violence that album. Like, if you got the CD, it came with some bonus tracks that had some covers on them, and that was kind of funny. And then, yeah, you know, I think what is he on volume four now of Graveyard Classics? Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, but a uh, lot of hand. Oh, Mark left us here. What happened? I'll be back. Okay, sorry, right, Alan, Aaron. Well, thanks for coming on, man, and um, you know, hanging out and talking some uh, concept yeah. albums. Um, yeah, any, man. any upcoming ones that you know of? I mean. I don't know. I don't really know if Opeth, uh, it, it, the new one's a concept album or not. I think the last one was. Um, I can't think of any ones that I know of that are coming up that yeah. are yeah, like the last, concept. The last big release I, I know of this year that's confirmed is Opeth, which comes out in November. So um, it wasn't going to come out the same day as Grand Megas, which I'm glad they pushed it because I, I hate when albums come out on the same day. Like, that yeah. One. Let's see. Like, just give me, give me a little bit of space, man. I don't, I don't need all this. I know the uh, Jerry Cantrell solo album came out the same day as Grand Megas. Also, I just finally got around listening to that not too long ago. It's good. Um, well, but, I was uh, like uh, yesterday. Two of my favorite bands, um, Vanna came out with his new album yesterday, and uh, yeah, uh, Burn Ritual. Jake from Burn Ritual sent me a, a link to. He just released an EP, so I was kind of I was listening to great new music all day long. So. Oh yeah, I'm still listening to the Grand Megas. So, uh, and of course, like, oh, Black that one's Sabbath. fucking awesome. I've had it in my car. Like, Mark's back. Yep. The, yeah, the Grand Megas album is fucking uh, killer. Uh, another one, uh, Dark Sky Sanctuary by Freeways, I think, is a loose concept because everything okay. kind of ties together. And that album is, oh my gosh, it came out earlier this year, and it's pretty fucking banging too. Cool. Yeah, I'll check that out. Any thrash bands that you know have concept albums, like pure concept albums that you know of? I mean, isn't Rain and Blood? Is it a concept? Is it? I mean, I know it's fast, but I don't know. That's really a, that really counts. Oh, wasn't um <laughs> one of uh oh, Megadeth's later ones? I think he the was like United failed. Abominations or something. Was that the supposed to be a concept failed, album? United Abominations. Yeah. Uh, Dystopia. Yes, that might have been it. I'm yeah. Dave Mustaine and I'm mad at the government. That kind of was that the concept? I think so. I, <laughs> I he went from I'm Dave Mustaine. Here's the I'm going to talk for the Democratic Rock to vote. I'm Dave Mustaine and I hate the government. I'm Dave Mustaine and I I endorse Ron DeSantis. <laughs> You know, I know this might be uh I might this might be like kind of uh uh unpopular to say right now, but um I am a fan of the Glorious Burden uh Ice Earth album, I will say. Uh I think that oh. album is really, really good. Um obviously now, you know, it's hard to say anything John Schaefer did was good, but I mean, you know, his yeah. guitar didn't commit a crime. Uh he did. And so um yeah, Glorious Burden's a good album. Uh it's, that's like the one with Ripper well, Owens and stuff. So it's funny that when you say that, um, mm -hmm. one of uh, an album I kind of used to really love listening to, and sometimes I still bust it out this time of year. Another concept album is Horror Show by uh Ice Earth. Each uh, you know, song is based on oh, a yeah, yeah. Horror yeah, character. I that. Sure is. Yeah. Uh, that's a pretty good album, man. I mean, John Schaefer, unfortunately, you know, seems like a shit <laughs> human being, but I like some of the early stuff, especially something Wicked This Way Comes, horror mm -hmm. show. 
Yeah, he was shorter. When we opened for him in 2012, I he was shorter than I imagined he would be. Really? Like I towered over him, and I'm six oh, okay. feet. Yeah. So, so he's like a Sylvester Stallone kind of thing. Yeah, he's right? like a, he's like he's probably like five four, five, five, maybe five, six at the top. Oh wow. But yeah, he was like I opened the doors going backstage. He was like standing there, like I looked down on him. I was like, hey man, what's up? You know, and it's like, <laughs> dude, what the fuck? I thought you'd be like six. And seven. he goes, You know, you are yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was he was nice. Like he didn't like walk away, turn his back on everything. We, well, we, we had like a I'm conversation. I'm in Indiana, and I don't claim his ass anymore. But um, but yeah, man. Like he just got into that damn YouTube rabbit hole, man, and that was it. But um, but yeah, I mean, you know, 2012 Ice Earth. It was pretty fun to open for him. That was a fun show. It was, a, it was an experience, to say the least. But um, but yeah, I mean, horror show was good too. Yeah, and Gory's Burden. So, but like I said, I know we can't really bring those up now uh in, in favor but um you know like i said the music didn't commit the crime so uh but although you can't there are some bands you can't not listen to anymore uh there's that one um who was the dude that used to rape babies uh in that band um uh, it was fucking uh lost profits yeah yes I mean, that guy dark, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah you can't even, i don't even think you can even find that anymore to listen to you like I it's so the bad. other guys in the band admit to being in the band anymore. Yeah, no, like... they started something else. I don't think they admitted either. Yeah, um, they were probably in like as I lay dying and then quit yesterday too. Um, Speaking of, yeah, I'd love to know. I'd about. love to know what happened there. Like everyone just quit like right at the same time. I wonder if they had a hit on them. I wonder if they had hits out on them and they had to fucking go into hiding or something. No I can't shit. hide if I'm in the band. <laughs> fucking hire a hitman and kill us all. <laughs> well, Tim said, "Hey, I got a contract for you guys," and they're like, "That's it. I'm out." <laughs> yeah. sign this contract it's like hitman we'll we'll see you about 10 a.m you know or we won't see you about 10 a.m but uh yeah hopefully the real story on that comes out so you know i'll be curious to know what happened there it's like it was like three out of five which means there's only one dude left um besides tim so we'll see and the floor manager too oh okay yeah so. yeah so like everyone's like i'm out yeah yep all right guys that was a fun conversation um i mean we can probably do this again next year after the uh, Ice Out one comes out and, and talk even more concept albums. Ooh. But, uh, but hey, man, hey, I'm excited, man. I'm excited for everything, all new music, even if I don't know the band all that well or whatever. I just like discovering. But um, since I do know Mark and with Ice Out now, I am looking forward to it. So, yeah. Hell yeah, sure. man. Is it going to be a full album or just an EP? It's going to be a full album. Okay, cool. Eight songs. What's crazy about Ice Howl is like, I've been liking Jason's music for years few years now and then i started doing this and then i found out mark was going to be in the band it was like fucking small world man you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> somebody um honestly that was because he did an, an interview on the metal forge and i kind of talked him into it and was just like dude this needs to see a stage and i'm like i will fucking play bass yeah was he just like a recording project yeah, uh, he had like a re he had like one show that was really, really, really bad. Uh, oh, we've all had those. <laughs> no, like oh, I have. It, it was like that one that broke spirits, and he didn't do and he didn't play again for fucking eight years. Gotcha. What was like, like the he didn't play just... live again for eight years? Was it like the attendance, or was it just like what? What was it? No, it? it was like the performance and everything. Oh. everything w went awry apparently okay. and um and i was just like dude you need to do this this needs to be a thing this has potential to be awesome mm -hmm. and i was like if you want a bass player i'll be there and all of a sudden like like two or three months later, he put a post on Facebook saying, thinking about starting an Ice Owl live band, who'd be interested in that? And I immediately messaged him and I said, I am fucking there even as a fan. And he was like, I was just about to message you. <laughs> and, and that's pretty, pretty much it. I mean, now here we are waiting going into 2025 writing a new album and and that so 
and that's what's like cool as like a fan you know is just being able to like support a band and then see them kind of get bigger and, and make being able to go from making eps to like full-length albums and being a live band and that, yeah, that that's yeah. so fucking cool that's why i'm such a big fan of night demon because like i remember when they were looking for a show like on facebook mm-hmm. like asking around and they said in my house and it's just like dude i know like i didn't do any of the work but like you always feel like a part of like the the journey. It's like you know I've played with him three times and I've seen him five and I'm like he he knows my name. He remembers my band name. He asked about my wife and kids. He asked yeah. uh, how the hurricane stuff was. You know. Um, yeah. So like and dude, he's out there open for like King Diamond and shit and Overkill on like off nights and he'll prefer they open for Blind Guardian and yeah. they call me by my first name. It's like it's cool, man. It's like it's really awesome. Like you know I don't you know, I didn't, and I don't, and, I, I didn't and, anything, and but, I'm gonna say this. It's one thing to be like professional and and email back and forth on that deal. Dude, you've got the text hookup. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's cool. Like, I have quite a few numbers of like shit I can't believe. Like, I have, um, I have a uh, Zach Wheeler from uh, Howling Giants personal number in my phone. Like, I can just text them and shit. And, and uh you know jarvis i got his number and um uh, even though i usually just use messenger because when he's overseas i don't know how that shit works but facebook works sure. around the world so i always use messenger but yeah like i was looking the other day i got i got a few my like, damn i got, I got uh, a few i got i got a uh, lost, uh, personal number which like you know he's local but i'm I'm like i'm a fan i'm like cool you know so yeah uh, i have uh my i have uh, i have somebody <laughs> it's pretty pretty popular a couple of them yeah uh, you, I, may, I may have Dave Ellison's. Yeah. Yeah. And be Joe, careful what no, time of day you text Sarah. him. Just be careful what time of day you text Dave Ellison. He might be. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Dave Ellison, if you're watching, you know you can't live it down. It's always going to be there. But, uh, it's, yeah. I mean, part. he's just joking. <laughs> I'm just um, joking. I don't yeah. have his number. I do <laughs> not. How about you, Aaron? You got anybody uh, that you think is a pretty big He deal? does. He yeah. absolutely does. I, I do. know. He has the amazing, the fucking legendary Dwayne Elder just fucking Oh, hell it. yeah. There you go, man. <laughs> I know Dwayne for a fact he has yeah. that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah nice, I know man. two people. <laughs> I got my, I got uh, my well, connection. On, uh, uh, this Scott Harrington of South of the Earth Records. Okay. He actually was a touring member of Nuclear Assault for a while. So yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I do want to shout out to fucking Dwayne though because he is, you know, just as much as Aaron is fucking hardcore into the into the music scene. Dwayne Dwayne is too, and everybody knows who he, should know who he is. So I always say that Dwayne knows every single band out there. Yeah, like he knows he's me. Me, we us three could start a band right now, and Dwayne already has our first demo. Yeah, even though we haven't written yeah. it yet, you know, <laughs> they pre ordered it. Yeah, dude, Aaron, you so, you were a bass player, right? I played bass for probably about two or three years. Um, never played anything live, never gotten into like live gigging or anything. Um, dude, but we then, could totally do this right now. J- Jason could play drums. You could play bass. I've got. I could play guitar. <clears throat> Dude, we we've totally got this. I need to learn. I need to crack down and learn how to record to my computer off my electric drums over here. Because then you can just you can just send them as MIDI and just put any sound on it you want. You know. I gotta get a bass just, guitar. I do. Even just like we just like wrote our own theme song, played our own theme songs or something. You know, it'd it be kind of cool. Yeah. That metal would, Forge. Yeah. Metal Metal Forge. Well, uh, rifles already done yours, so yeah. Uh, how we were yeah, that's a that's a good one. I love it. And then, yeah, I mean, they did that for I think the two hundredth episode or something. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Now we here we are on the on the Pressure heel 300, of three yeah. three hundred with Venom Inc. Yeah, that's awesome, man. It's awesome. Nice. Uh, that's Rick another Shatton. one that that's one that's like just a text away. Tony Dolan is a text away from me. Right. And and I love that because he is mm-hmm. such a sweet, sweet dude. Fucking he he cares. He asks, you know, how how you're doing, how things have been, you know, just like you know, how you said Jarvis is. 
you know, where, you know, ask about the wife and kids and all of that. So, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah I remember seeing an old thing about uh, back during the 80s in the PMRC and one of somebody, one of those religious groups, um, they accused Venom of putting um, backward satanic messaging in their records. And the guys from Venom were like, we have satanic messages when you play our albums regularly. Why do we put yes. money to put it in backwards? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. How we, I always feel like modern bands nowadays missed out on the whole like uh, parental advisory sticker craze. Like that was like an automatic, like that was automatic, like gold record. Like if you had that on your shit, you're like, you're, you're selling like, you know, a hundred thousand copies. No fucking problem. Well, Back the in the yeah. 80s, you know, now it's like, oh, you said fuck. It's like, 20 plays you know so it's not that big a deal anymore yeah well there's a store there two live crew Eight, when, yeah, they, be, yeah. when, when two live crew came out i guess like they were only like marginally popular in like down in southern florida mm-hmm. but then their album got banned in a county down there and someone got busted for selling it and that hit the national news well once it hit the national news and kids heard there's a banned record guess what album everyone wanted yeah, yeah. And then it ended up going platinum and shit yeah yeah That's those true. like like i said man those those stickers like made made bands like and then they did the uh walmart did a thing with the tool album with undertow <laughs> where they made it just a barcode oh oh was it i yeah i remember they, walmart used to like edit music and shit but sell r they did movies. that with their nirvana album too uh-huh uh, well never mind or you know it was uh the in in, utero with rate me the one with rate me in the back they changed it to wave me <laughs> but if you bought the record, the record still said "rate me." The inside liner notes oh, really? still said "rate me." Just on the yeah. back cover, I guess it said "wave me." Yeah, whatever the fuck yeah. that means. <clears throat> yeah, and you know, I used to have, I used, to, I've been back and forth in Nirvana for a while. Like, I used to like them when they came out because, like, I just got cable, so they hit like right when I got cable. So like, it was like something new. And then like for a while, I was like, eh, this band's kind of overrated. But listen to them now, it's like, dude, they're actually pretty good. Like not every song is like awesome, but like dude, Kurt Cobain has some pretty he was a talented songwriter, dude. He was yeah. very pop oriented, but yeah, the songs had an edge, man. Like, but you the know, thing too is, is like the off the beaten path songs mm-hmm. are really where it's at now. You know, like territorial pissings and shit yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, or fucking uh fucking uh something in the way yeah yeah i've always thought the song breed off Nevermind was one of the fucking heaviest songs of the 90s to me yeah i mean it's like it's punk but it's like fucking metal as fuck too it's like it's i mean it's it could go either way but like it's it's very rooted in like both but it's nasty man like mm-hmm. so yeah you my know, first band i read, actually covered I read that. about a book about about the the creation of that album mm-hmm. and how it was just everything that was done was to the fucking T and he and Cobain wrote everything out on how he wanted to do the album. Right. Like he knew how many reels of tape that they they needed and it would get them all the way to the very end with only X amount of takes and it that's where the budget went they spent like three grand on the recording and the other like 47 went to fucking uh butch vig right to produce well, I was the watching album. something and he was talking about like when he was recording the drums of dave Grohl, and like they were trying to get a bunch of takes and it wasn't really you know they were having trouble nailing something down and he goes to dave Grohl, have you ever tried playing to a click track and I guess David Crowell said, like, broke his heart at, at the time, you know? And yeah. so he said he went home and tried playing to one, and he said he came in the next day and nailed it in, like, two takes. Like, so I guess he just, like, you know, was kind of realized, okay, maybe I do need the click track to kind of set this. Because, like you said, Kurt was such a perfectionist on how he wanted stuff that, yeah, you know, he didn't want, you don't want to be changing time up and down, you know? Yeah, right. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, yeah I got yeah. an appreciation for them after being in a band for however how many years now, and, and listening to like their their process and stuff. It's like, man, these guys were actually really fucking really talented. So, so yeah, mm-hmm. I'm kind of back in like the pro Nirvana uh, camp. I was kind of like down on them for a while just because, like, as eh, you know, 
if they catch a wave, are they really that good? But they're they're really that good, I think. Like I said, they're I mean, like the Just a Side album, dude. That's that's got some of my favorite fucking songs on it. It's just like it's just like throwaway tracks and stuff. It's not even a real album, it's a collection, you know. And they have there's some songs on there are really fucking heavy shit too, you know. I think it can get pretty easy to kind of like get down on Nirvana because so many people like said the deification of Kurt Cobain and like he's some type of god or you know, sure. um, which you know. <clears throat> Honestly, I mean, the band might have broken up if they would have continued. Because, you know, from what I heard, he can be kind of a miserable guy to be around. And in the band, he tried, I guess he wanted to kick Dave Grohl out a bunch of times because I think he was jealous of Dave Grohl and stuff. And, you know, so there was a lot of, you know, Kurt Cobain wasn't the easiest guy to get along with sometimes. What are your thoughts on, like, Unplugged? Oh, I love the Unplugged album. I like it. Do you? You know, yeah. like the whole series or just that album? From that, the the Nirvana Unplugged in particular. Yeah, it's good. I mean, that that Man and Sold the World uh, cover is pretty iconic. Um, the so were the like the Meat Puppets yeah. covers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. there's a lot in there. Yeah, it, I mean, it just strips it down basically. I mean, you can just like hear the song outside of distortion and stuff, and you can tell that's when you can tell like the songs are really well crafted. I mean, yeah, it's like in the air. It's like a little poppy, you know. Um, but you know, I mean, like it's just like. It's just kind of like the '90s Beatles, really. You know. Did you guys Beatles, have a favorite unplugged or? Um, Kiss unplugged. That started the reunion back. <laughs> honestly, you know what? Kiss unplugged. It the video version is even better. Is it? Yeah, because you get stuff like Domino in the video, mm -hmm. but Domino is like not on the actual album. Oh, okay, I didn't know they that. cut it. They it's like it's like I never owned four, it, so yeah, it's like three or four songs shorter on the album version than on the video, gotcha. and the video is like really cool. So that is actually a good one. Um, Neil Young unplugged, like the real where he is unplugged and everything is a good one. He's the only artist to actually play an unplugged electric because he didn't understand that there was like no you need to bring the acoustic oh, so you showed it was electric and they just played it like with a mic yeah oh nice that's really cool. young for you yeah. <laughs> yeah i like the stevie ray vaughn one that one was good i mean yeah. it, it does say unplugged so yeah i kind of see where like if it's just like it's just they should have just said acoustic and it would be like oh okay because you know i, I kind of get that I could have made that mistake if I was like, you know, just into myself a lot. Gotta bring those jazz brushes, right, Jason? <laughs> no, I would just I would just play like Lars. I would set up my ride symbol and call it acoustic. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave the China at home for this one, guys. Nice. Yeah, he uses those like um they're like uh, uh sticks, but they have like gaps in them. One that like one of the unplugged it. series that I do like is Unplugged Volume One by Haunt. Oh, that's great. I have that uh, record. Yeah. He, it honestly has like the coolness of like, there's like the, the tambourine that's on the, on, yeah, there it is. Yeah. That's cool. And it's got the, uh, like the tambourine that's on the, uh, the hi hat. Mm -hmm. So when, when you get the, the step of the hi hat, you hear the fuck, hear it reverberate through the tambourine too. Uh, so there's that that sounds so cool it's almost got like the i don't know like the the california salsa feel to some of the drums in the songs right um i love that and i've always wanted that show honestly on a on a regional slash local level i've wanted unplugged that was the original concept of the Metal Forge. I was actually thinking about having some local musicians from around here do something like that in my bar area down here and filming it. I've been thinking about it for a little while. Just thinking about how I would get it together and stuff like that, or if it could even be done, or if it would be worth it. So, uh, oh, yeah, be over. yeah, if you got a soundboard with like, uh, and some, uh, had like, um, you know, like six or eight channels. And you just run in the computer to a recording software. That way it wouldn't be like so like on the phone, like missing a yeah. lot of the, like the bottom end from the phone recording. Yeah, yeah I, I don't, I don't have be... that stuff, but I know yeah. like you know, a billion people do. So 
Yeah. Sure. I mean, sure, I'm sure Dwayne probably could help you out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Kyle would, I'm sure. Yeah, he's uh because he's their the video guy. The light. There's a few guys around here that do some stuff like that. So it's just like, you know, it would be cool to have like, you know, local artists and, you know, be able to, uh, something new on a sound battery, I guess. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, what would, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a name for it. Like, it would be like a simple assault and battery. <laughs> Instead of like simple assault. Aggravated. It, well, it's it's aggravated assault and battery. Hell yeah. Since it's in the basement, battery. I awesome. subterranean sound check. <laughs> Dude. That that's what you need to do. You need to fucking have like simple assault and battery, and it's your your like acoustic duos. Yeah, and aggravated assault and battery is like full electric. Yeah, it's, that's yeah, it's thrash fun. metal oh, yeah. or fucking yeah. death metal or something. Yeah, yeah, that's fucking cool. That's a good idea. All right, Dude, guys, that's well, great. Yeah, we've had a, quite the discussion here tonight. We went on to uh, you know Hitler mustaches and concept albums and. And uh, Nirvana and all kinds of shit. But uh, let's go ahead and just end it on a good note here. Uh, so, uh, Mark, you got anything you want to push coming up? Uh, Metal Force 300 is coming up uh, at the time of recording this, about a week next yeah, week. Yeah, Metal Force uh, 300 is yeah. on 11 8 of 24. Uh, then we have a whole slew of awesome fucking guests coming up, like Sun Mantra Smolder. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the Pale Horses are coming up. And then uh, the six year anniversary show is on one three twenty five and bam. That's on my yes. birthday also, yeah. We're gonna Three. we're gonna totally we've got new beginnings and dire's eves uh cool. that that day. So we're gonna it's probably gonna be a new metal forge. We're probably okay. looking at a couple of new not, hosts. Not in you is it? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you for clearing that up. I didn't know if I was going to go uh, Waka Waka uh, when I signed on for the, the new Metal Forge. But uh, <laughs> uh, how about you, Aaron? Anything, uh, co- any interviews coming up? Any uh, shows? Um, yeah, I got a couple. I got one in the uh, that I've already recorded with uh, a band from Santiago, Chile called uh, Dixie Go. Nice. They're a really cool do metal band. Um, mm-hmm. That was my first international interview, so that was pretty cool. And then I got one I'm recording um, soon with a band from Connecticut here called Turkey Vulture. Oh, it's yeah. a husband oh, and yeah. wife team. And so oh, it'll nice. be cool to pick their brain a little bit. Yeah, so that's about idea. it. I got coming probably up. Right back uh, situation there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. Uh, I just want to push a couple albums coming out and came out um, to help out some of the bands around here. So uh, a band that me and Mark have been talking to about coming on the Metal Forge called Harsh Realm, a death metal band from here in Nashville, just put out their album last week. So uh, they could do some help. They lost a lot of their equipment and stuff. They were in a storage building and it flooded. And then uh, also another band, a friend of mine, uh, Timothy Cook, a drummer for Weight Shift. Uh, they released one single, a new one coming out this week, and the album comes out in November. So it's up for pre-order now on cassette and um, and CD uh, and digital, of course. So, um, yeah, check out Weight Shift and, uh, and Harsh Realm and then um, – yeah, and then uh, November 8th in Asheville, if you're in town, uh, we'll be playing at the uh, Odd, some kind of benefit show. Don't even know the lineup yet because everything got fucked up and moved around and stuff. So whatever it is, we'll be there in some other bands. I'm not sure who yet. I'm sure they'll be awesome. Uh, and yeah, so that's all we got. Uh, and then, uh, you know, hopefully a, a song recorded by the end of the year. Um, if all goes well, we'll see. So, Hell yeah. yeah everything's, just, right. everything's just kind of slow right now. It's like, it's like fucking, you know, they call it the Tar Heel State. And, and it's like, it's just kind of like way through like waste time mud, you know. So everything's opening up slowly, but I mean, water, city water still not drinkable in, in the city, and you know, there's still places that only have power, having cut trees out of the road and shit yet. I mean, they haven't. Even, yeah, it, it's still it's still pretty rough. But uh, tonight there's a big country benefit concert going on in Charlotte. And, um, it's supposed to help help out with some building houses and shit around here. So hopefully that's uh, not just lip service. If it happens, cool. Um, I'm not watching it personally, but you know, if you're, you know, if you're into like donating and shit, I'm sure you can find a link to donate some money to that, uh, charity stuff. So, so yep. And that's it guys. All right. Awesome. Yeah. It felt good to be back on it and doing the alehorn again. I know it's been a little while. I didn't anticipate the, you know, (laughs) I didn't anticipate the worst storm ever recorded in us history to hit. Uh, so yeah, I said back a little bit, but yeah, you know, everyone's resilient. We will rebuild, as I say. So, um, so yeah. 
All right, everyone. We well, thanks re- for rebuild him better, yeah. stronger. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they rebuilt Anakin. We could rebuild Asheville. It's possible. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Just need a Palpatine to fucking oversee it, man. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We might be having that in a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, who knows, man? Who knows? Yeah. Either way, I don't feel good about it. Let so, the hate but... flow through you. Yeah. <laughs> Let the hate flow through you. <laughs> I mean, it's either that or he goes to get a job at McDonald's. It can go either way, I guess. So uh, that's yes. Ours is hiring. All right, guys. Well, awesome. again, uh, stay safe and stay heavy out there, and we will see you in November for another Ale Horn. Uh, should be a good time. I got some ideas. Not sure what it's going to be yet, but it will be something fun. So uh, until then, right. thanks for tuning in for the for the Metal Forge, Assault Battery, Ale Horn, and Unsleeved, which I haven't forgot about either. And we will see you next time. Thanks. For 45 years in keeping Louisville weird, Electric Ladyland has been there for all your eccentricities. While they do offer the best smoking supplies out on the market today, there's a whole lot more to check out. From ashtrays and blacklight posters, to records, incense and burners, and items to stock your metaphysical supply. They are open from 10 to 10, seven days a week. Located at 2325 Bardstown Road in Louisville, Kentucky, and at electricladyland420.com.